Welcome back to the Story of Liberty. This is your host, John Bona. We continue on in our series in the discussion of the sovereignty of God over his people, creation, and even let's discuss now his control over, let's call them irrational creatures. Remember the plagues upon Egypt and how perfect God's rulership is shown. At his word, the rivers brought forth frogs. How many, we don't know. There were a lot of them. And these frogs entered the very palace of Pharaoh and into the houses of his servants. Think about it. They entered the beds, the ovens. Swarms of flies, too, invaded the land of Egypt. But there were no flies in the land of Goshen. Is that not interesting? Next, the cattle were stricken. Did you know that God actually separated the cattle of Israel from the cattle of Egypt? Nothing died. All that is in the children's house of Israel. But the Lord said at an appointed time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that in the land. And all the cattle of Egypt died, but the cattle of the children of Israel did not die. As we see, God is in control of all things. Look at the locusts, millions of locusts sent to plague Pharaoh in his land. God appointed the time and their visitation. He determined their course and he assigned the limits of their deprivation. See, angels are not the only ones that, who do God's bidding. Even the beasts of the land perform his good pleasure. Equally striking is in the case of the prophet Elijah. Remember the word of the Lord came to him and he said, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Think about that. The natural instinct of a raven is a bird of prey. It was held in subjection. And instead of consuming the food themselves, and that's what ravens do, and other birds' food, they carried it to God's servant in his solitary retreat. Is further proof required? We could go on and on. God makes a dumb ass to rebuke the prophet's madness. He sent for two angry bears from the woods to kill 40 and two of Elijah's enemies, those that tormented him. In fulfillment of God's word, he caused the dogs to lick up the blood of wicked Jezebel. He seals the mouths of the Babylonian lions when Daniel was cast into the den. Later, you may remember, those lions, they ate the prophet's accusers. He prepared a great whale to swallow Jonah. And then at the ordained time, he compelled that giant fish to spit forth Jonah on dry land. He also had a fish to carry a coin to Peter for money to pay taxes and in order to fulfill his word he made the cock crow twice after the apostle Peter's denial. So we see God reigns over all the beasts of the field. He reigns over the birds of the air the fishes of the sea, great and small. 
And he does this to perform his will. God's will be done. Thank you for joining us at the Story of Liberty.